seven years, the government signed an emergency order late last year for duty-free concession on some goods for residents seeking to repair and rebuild after the passing of Hurricane Sandy. February 15th was that deadline. Now, in this report, Shakara Trot tells us what the response has been like to this assistance program. Administrator Alexander Williams says up until Friday of last week, claims submitted for duty-free concessions had already surpassed $2 million. The local administrator says the hurricane victims have certainly taken advantage of the government's assistance. Uh, we would have had some 108 applications that were processed through this office and approved by the NEMA head office in Nassau. Williams admits that the current state of the economy did hamper some residents who are seeking relief. If there are some persons whose goods are on the dock as we speak and did not meet the deadline. And of course, there are these other persons, the less um, economically um, fortunate ones, the um, indigent and senior citizens, who are asking for special assistance. They have no resources whatsoever. For the most part, they are retired um, um, and or unemployed. Now, while some hurricane victims didn't make the deadline, Administrator Williams says an extension may be in the pipeline. We have had some 127 applicants who have requested additional time to be able to put together their funds so that they can buy their materials, furnishing, furniture, appliances, and in some cases, vehicles. Shakara Trot, CNS Network News. An island in the northern Bahamas. We do apologize for experiencing some technical difficulties. Moving on, an island in the northern Bahamas has been cut off, from, cut off from the rest of the world. This after an incident involving a project by the Bahamas Telecommunications Company suddenly came to a halt. Joan Davis Roll reports. BTC executive Marlon Johnson calling the incident in the Berry Islands unfortunate. ZNS News caught up with Johnson while on Grand Bahama to address the Bahamas International Investment Business Forum. And he gave this update. Unfortunately, we had a tower collapse in the Berry. The good news is that nobody got hurt. So we're very, very grateful and appreciative nobody was injured. And for, but we had an external contractor who we had engaged to take down an old tower of ours. And as they were taking down the old tower, um, they, they, they did something that, that um, caused that old tower to fall onto the new tower. So it brought down the communications of uh, Berry Islands, all of the cellular network, as well as the connectivity between the Berry Islands and the rest of the Bahamas and the world. So persons on island can still make landline calls, but the cellular network has been disrupted, as well as the landline outsider and connect communication outside of the Berry Islands. He says an extensive investigation has been launched, designed to avert any possible interruption in services. Um, so we are doing a thorough investigation. We want to make sure that whatever the contractor did, they were following, obviously, the um, right protocols when they did it. Um, and that's a concern of ours. And of course, we have a situation now where we have a community in the Bahamas that is cut off. So what we've done is we've flown down a couple of satellite phones for the chief medical officer, some of the other key government officials there, to at least make sure that they have emergency contact with persons outside uh, of the Berry Islands for the time being. And we're working with some of the government agencies like BC to see if we can find a temporary fix by getting a long 90-foot pole um, so that we can put up a temporary solution until we can order another 200-foot pole to, to replace it. And that's the unfortunate thing. Of course, we just can't go to Walmart and pick up a 200-foot pole. It's one of those things that has to be specially ordered. But we're very, very grateful that BC has been working with us to enable us to at least see if we can find a temporary pole to allow us to get some temporary arrangement to just get connectivity back on the island. Johnson says while crews work feverishly to restore telecommunications on that northern island, BTC is reviewing its overall contingency plan. We are making the network more resilient, so we're doing our best to make sure we build in resiliencies all around our networks. But unfortunately, there are certain things that do happen that you can never anticipate. Um, you know, the, the, the towers are uh, designed to withstand hurricane forces. 
but they not withstand another tower fall on them because they never is it, uh, it would be envisaged that a tower would fall on another tower. So um, and in some of these small islands, they're really really vulnerable. So as part of our full network review, we are looking to see what we can do to build in redundancies for those smaller communities. We have a contingency plan that we have implemented. Joan Davis Roll, Saturn S Network News. Also in news tonight, a local communications giant is advancing in the world of technology. Sabrina Brown filled us in. Cable Bahamas is working to keep pace with consumer demands in this high technology age. The communications provider recently opened its state-of-the-art data center here in Grand Bahama. Commercial sales director Andre Knowles. It's more of a disaster recovery business continuity center. So a client may have gear at their particular office, but they want to feel secure that in case of a disaster, they have a backup facility. This facility houses, can house their gear for backup purposes. According to Knowles, the focus is on security and reliability, and he says the infrastructure was designed to support this technological environment. Any data center is built on redundancy. As you can see from this building, it's a nondescript building, but the building is a concrete structure built to withstand Category 5 hurricanes. It has a solid poured concrete roof, and everything in here is built on redundancy. All of the power supplies within the racks, we have a, what we call an un uninterruptible power supply, A and B feed. So the whole idea is mission critical gear will never go down. Noel says customers are already taking advantage of this system, which he says is designed to exceed their expectations. Right now we have eight full racks and six half racks. So we can say we could house 14 clients, but we have room for expansion. As you can see, we only have half the room with racks currently. So we could probably fit about uh, 20 to 24 clients in here very comfortably. These can be very small clients or very large clients. Some clients will want two full racks. Some clients may only want a, a half of a rack. If the need uh, manifests itself, we can even put third racks for even smaller clients. So it all depends. Operations Manager Edris Wilson is excited about this world-class facility. This facility adds a, a new dimension for our local business here in Grand Bahama. As Grand Bahama looks to uh, attract a, a di diversity of business opportunities here in Grand Bahama. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Police expressing concern about the level of violence taking place in the 8 Mile Rock community. The officer in charge, Superintendent Randall DeVoe, is calling on the public at large to help resolve this problem by focusing on co conflict resolution skills. We've been having a number of matters in which violence are involved. Persons um, attacking each other with bottles and that type of stuff. Um, what we really should do is they can, the police is there to assist and they can report the matter to the police as we can intervene and have the matter resolved. We can also wish, we would also wish to have um, persons who um, do some type of work in mediation whereby they uh, get involved in community issues, community issues, community actions, and they can be those persons in which um, if they have family issues that they can assist in that regard. Um, if it's matter involved in school, school kids involved, um, that can be that, that can be a part. We now, Superintendent DeVoe says the church can lead the way in addressing this issue with violence. He's asking church leaders to get involved. I know that the churches are doing a great work um, throughout the community, but they too can become involved in dealing with persons of a younger age, particularly the young men who um, resort into violence and who are unable to resolve, say for example, persons calling them ill names. Um, it's just a matter in which there's grave concern and I wish them to do, do their part in resolving these kind of, type of matters. The government is preparing to present its mid-year budget in the House of Assembly on Monday, and it is expected that spending cuts will be revealed for a number of government agencies. Tonight, a former educator is taking issue with reports of a proposed cut at the College of the Bahamas. Sabrina Brown has this story. Educator and community activist Joe Davo says he's surprised that the government would consider reducing its subvention to the College of the Bahamas by some $2.5 million. He calls this move retrogressive. The College of the Bahamas, I don't think, has even one major donor apart from the subsidy which comes from the government and maybe small donations here and there. And therefore, 
uh, to burden the college now with a reduction in a subsidy uh, can only spell doom for the College of the Bahamas. The impending budget cut has forced college officials to look at increasing tuition fees by as much as $25 per credit. Darvel also finds this disturbing. Right now, we have so few individuals who can even uh, afford uh, the fees that are charged by the College of the Bahamas. And uh, some parents and individuals um, go to great struggle in order to be able to attend that particular institution. My greatest fear is for the males in our community. We have already seen an incredible dumbing down in terms of the educational progress uh, for men in the Bahamas. If tuitions are going to be increased, it means that we would have even fewer males qualifying or being able financially to attend that particular institution. The former educator is deeply concerned about the impact this decision could have on the common man. My fear is that we are heading for a situation where uh, only the rich and the elitists would be able to afford tertiary education in the Bahamas as offered by the College of the Bahamas. Uh, right now, there are many things which are lacking in the College of the Bahamas in terms of its uh, facilities, even in terms of its programs. And if you were to look at the uh, extension of the program, the College of the Bahamas on Grand Bahama, uh, that speaks volumes to the fact that we are yet not prepared to put the money where our mouths are uh, in terms of uh, education. For years, education has received the lion's share of the budget, and Darvel is adamant that this vital ministry should not be sacrificed to give priority to other areas. Cutting back subsidy, asking the College of Bahamas to cut back initially in the first year uh, $2.5 million, I cannot see how in the world uh, anyone can imagine that the status towards or the journey towards the full-fledged university could ever come about. I would think that we would uh, be a little bit more, uh, a little bit wiser, and probably allocate any resources that might come up in the near future to actually continuing the um, establishment of the University of the Bahamas, rather than building another parliament. Sabrina Brown, CNS Network News. Now, yesterday, the Minister of Education told the media that only the cabinet can approve a hike in tuition fees at COB. He said he believed such a request to increase the fees would not receive much support from members of cabinet at this time. Funding com coming for the Bartlett Hill Primary School, the donation made by the Member of Parliament for Central Grand Bahama, Nico Grant, who says he will ensure that the school is able to provide wholesome activities for students on campus. Today, Grant presented a check to walk instruction in the amount of $27,400 for the refurbishment of the basketball court at the school. The work is expected to start within 14 days of today and is expected to take some 30 days to complete. The funds for this project, which is being executed by walk instruction, has been provided via my constituency allowance. I'm pleased uh, to be able to assist in the further growth and development of the young people at Bartlett Hill. Uh, all things being equal, they will have a new basketball court when they return from their Easter break. We've been working at it for quite a while, since July of last year, to try and get the deal done. Um, and we will certainly work expeditiously to get it completed. Some of the time frame there involved is just to get the materials to the island because the, the backboards would have to be ordered from overseas and that takes uh, several weeks to get in. Now, principal of the school, Jacqueline Kinder, says the return of the basketball facility will be a welcomed addition. I believe that the students will definitely enjoy um, the basketball court. I know we at Bartlett Hill Primary, we believe in the holistic approach, and we believe that this bas basketball court will only bring us to a higher level in the sports arena. Grand Bahamas Youth Choir is preparing to hit the road. The popular youth group continues to thrill audiences here at home, and they hope to have the same impact on the international stage. Megan Shepard has the story. 
lively, energetic, and come prepared for lots of noise. Um, tickets are only $10, just $10. And your money will go towards a worthy cause. Artistic director of the Grand Bahama Youth Choir, Kevin Tomlinson, says he has always been about exposing his students to bigger and better opportunities around the world. His students have been invited to attend the Marvin Winans Academy of Performing Arts this April, and now the group is attempting to raise approximately $13,000. This Sunday, the group is set to put on a performance that is sure to amaze and show the community exactly why they are an award-winning ensemble. As a part of our fundraiser, we're actually launching a, a new show that we've created called Kids of Soul. Now, Kids of Soul is a different kind of show. They're going to be um, in exhibition on Sunday, showcasing their talents, what they can do. So this is actually our counterpart to what American Idol is, America. Kids of Soul will become that for Grand Bahama because it's that type of show where we're giving the spotlight to them and them really showcasing what they can do. The Kids of Soul show kicks off at 6 p.m. in the Bishop Michael Eldon Auditorium. Tomlinson says the students were allowed to choreograph their own routines, and he is confident that the audience will be impressed with the show of talent. I am encouraging the community to come and support us. Come and support us because this is going to help these kids to get the level of exposure. I mean, Marvin Wyden, if you know him, he is at the top of the chain in gospel music in America. So exposure is my thing. Because the more exposure our kids get, the more competent they become, the more confidence they build, and it spreads into everything that they do. And then also we networking with groups that could create opportunities for scholarships and different things. So that's really my focus. There are 150 students in the youth choir, but Tomlinson says only a select few will travel to Detroit. The selection was based on academics, commitment to the program, and overall performance ability. Megan Shepard, ZNX Network News. Stay with us, Megan Shepard joins us next with sports.